what are the different stages of getting from Earth to Mars look like? If we want to eventually send people there and colonize the red planet, then we need to understand what it looks like getting there and why it takes so long. So let's talk about that. So before we get started about understanding how something goes from Earth to Mars, we have to understand the basics of orbital mechanics or what an orbit is. So an orbit is a spacecraft or satellite that is traveling around a larger body, whether it be a moon, a planet like Earth or Mars, the sun, all of these things are massive enough that their gravity can keep things in an orbit. Now first let's talk about the International Space Station. The International Space Station is in what's called a low Earth orbit, also known as LEO. Now LEO, as the name says, is pretty low, close to Earth, and it's orbiting Earth. Now, it's traveling at about 4.76 miles per second, which is also 17,000 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast. Now you might be asking why is that so fast? Well, it turns out an orbit isn't what you might think of in space. Typically when you think of space, you think of things just floating around, just relaxing. Basically there's no gravity, right? Well, that's actually something incorrect. You're still under the influence of Earth's gravity, it's just that you're going so fast perpendicular to Earth that Earth is still pulling you in. It's just that you're going faster than Earth can pull you in. So rather, it's changing your trajectory and putting you in a circle around the Earth, also known as an orbit. And depending on how fast you're going depends on how high you are above the Earth. Meaning if you want to go higher or further away, you just need to go faster and Earth's pull will have less of an effect on you. And that is the basics of orbital mechanics. So if we want to go from Earth to Mars, it's actually fairly complicated. You have to leave the Earth, go around the Sun, then get close enough to Mars, slow down fast enough, and then once you get to Mars, you have to enter an orbit and then land on the surface. I want to talk about all of those in full detail. So to begin, let's start out with launching from Earth. Last episode mentioned the different launch vehicles that would be successful in taking us to Mars. So if you missed that, be sure to check it out. However, once you get into space, you are still, whether it's in LEO or a different orbit around Earth, you still need to get to Mars. So the step is going on a hyperbolic trajectory, leaving Earth, heading into interplanetary space. Now, what does that mean? So if you are in space and you have an orbit, and for example, you want to turn your rockets on, that's going to make you go faster. So if you go faster, you're going to burn your orbit out, going from a circular orbit to more of an elliptical orbit. And if you continue to burn and burn and burn, the ellipse of that orbit is going to continue to grow and grow and grow until one end is at infinity or beyond, meaning that you will just basically be leaving Earth. And this is important because you are going so fast that you are leaving Earth's gravitational effect. You'll still be under the gravitational effect of the sun. You'll be in what's called a heliocentric orbit, helio standing for the sun, Centric meaning centered and orbit being an orbit. So you're in a sun-centered orbit. And this orbit is really special because it's called a Hohmann transfer. Now this Hohmann transfer has a perigee or the closest distance to the sun is at a radius that the earth is and the farthest distance from the sun is at a radius of what Mars is. Meaning that as you transfer throughout that orbit you'll slowly be drifting away from the sun and slowly be drifting towards Mars. So this transfer is actually different from going to any planet to planet, and it turns out going from Earth to Mars is about 7 to 8 months depending on when you launch. Now there is a certain time when Earth and Mars have to be synced up just perfectly because if you go too early or too late, you'll arrive at Mars's orbit when Mars isn't there. It'll either be early on in its orbit or it'll be farther past it, meaning you will have missed it. So if you don't launch at the exact right time, usually a couple week time frame, then you'll just miss the planet altogether when you arrive at its orbit. So where does the whole seven to eight month thing come from? Well, as I mentioned, we're slowly drifting around the sun towards Mars, and we're actually experiencing most of a year. And this is because as we're in an orbit around the sun, it takes a lot longer to get to different locations. For example, the International Space Station is whipping around the Earth, experiencing a sunset and sunrise every 45 minutes. Whereas when you're going around the sun, it takes Earth an entire year to go around the sun just once. And since we're going further and further, it takes even longer and longer. So instead, if you launch at the exact right time, you'll take the home and transfer all the way to Mars. 
and once you get at Mars, you have to do the opposite of what you did at Earth. You'll be in a hyperbolic trajectory going around Mars, and instead of speeding up, you'll want to slow down. And you'll want to slow down because you're going too fast to stay in a Martian orbit, and rather, if you slow down slow enough, then you'll be in a Mars orbit. And once you get into a Mars orbit, then you will be ready to land on the surface. Now, as I mentioned before, the Hohmann transfer is the most fuel efficient method and takes a long time. Seven to eight months in interplanetary space can be pretty harmful to people in the spacecraft because of radiation, can be pretty boring, and could be a big problem if something goes wrong on the transfer over there. In the past, we have sent rovers and we have sent satellites to orbit around the planet. However, by sending a manned mission, if you're off by just a millimeter per second or a centimeter per second, that could be the difference between hitting Mars or the location that you want exactly and could be 100,000 miles away. So in this episode, we talked about the basics of orbital mechanics. We discussed home and transfers, why it takes so long to get to Mars, and what are some of the challenges we have in getting there. In the next episode, now that we're orbiting around Mars, we have to land on the surface. We're going to talk about what are some of the challenges, what have we done in manned landings in the past, and how can we overcome these. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.